Okay, good morning, pharmacy. This class that we're going to go over, specifically the ratios of weights and IV bags, gets tied into your compounding class that you're taking right now, okay, or pharmacy lab skills. Let me talk terminology first before we start. Solute, solvent, solution. You will always encounter this terminologies. So you've been making solutions and suspensions, right? In lab skills, in your compounding class, non-sterile compounding. So this terminology goes for sterile and non-sterile compounding as well. <laughs> Solute, solvent, and solution are three terminologies that you will always encounter. When you say solute, this is the substance to be dissolved. The substance to be dissolved. So it's usually in powder, granules, small form, or solid form. Follow? Solvent is your dissolving medium, substance that is used to dissolve the powders, the granules, the salt, follow? So what is it usually in? Liquid form. Remember when we did your um, check off for um, making solutions and suspension, you had your flour or whatever powder, that you use and you have your water, okay? So in that flour and water, flour represents your active ingredient when we did that, okay? And then your water represents your, what? Solvent or your dissolving medium, follow? Okay. So your solute is the powder form. Your solvent is usually water, which is the dissolving medium, but it's not always water. It's just that water is the universal solvent, follow? Some of you, your solution turned out to be one phase, right? After you combine the active ingredient in powder form and the water, it turns into powder becomes one phase. It dissolved 100%. Right? And that's what you call solution because it's one phase. Okay? But if the powder, your active ingredient, then dissolve fully, that is your suspension. Okay? Going back to the terminologies, the substance to be dissolved is the solute, and the dissolving medium is the solvent. And when you combine this two, you create a solution. This is important. What if you have two liquid forms that you combine, which one is the solute and which one is the solvent? You have two liquid forms, liquid active ingredients that you need to combine to make a solution. Which one is the solute and which one is the solvent? You guess? I did this last time, so the ones who were here should know the answer. An example a while ago was powder dissolved in water becomes one phase, right? Your solute is the powder, your solvent is the water to make a solution. But what if you have two liquids? Which one will you identify as the solute? And which one will you identify as the solvent? You have two liquids, because that forms a solution too. You have two liquids, you have to mix to make a solution. Which one is the solute? The first liquid that you put in. Kyle, do you remember the answer to that? Correct. Okay. 
the solute is the one that is less in volume. Okay, so if you have to mix a 20 ml and a 50 ml, both in liquid form, the 20 ml will be your solute. The 50 ml will be your solvent to make a solution. Are these terminal terminologies clear before I move on? So we're going to apply that. Okay, solute, solvent, and solution. Now your IV bags actually have solute, solvent, and solution there. Have your IV bags have solute and solvent to make the solution. Because your IV bags are solution. Okay. I don't know if you remember me telling the story back in the day when there are no IV bags. I used to make this IVs normal saline using that bottle in old movies. If you've seen it, the one they hung they hang upside down. Okay, in old hospitals. Okay, I used to make that. I measure salt, put it in that bottle, add water, seal that, okay? And then an orderly, somebody will come pick it up for sterilization. And then it gets returned to us sterilized already the next day. This was before the IV bag test. That's old school, okay? Very old school. And then the IV bags came, which is better, single use. We don't have to make it. We don't have to measure salt and water. But remember the story on um, Emily's Law, okay? That particular case, the tech what? Whipped up something instead of using the one that's already available, okay? They're usually available in the right strength already. You just have to pick and choose the right one, okay? You don't have to make one. One in a million chances will you run out of the IV bags that you need. Is that clear? Okay. So that particular case, Emily's law, it wasn't necessary for the tech to make an IV bag. She did. And she did the math wrong. Okay. Was that your case, Kaylin? She did the math wrong. Okay. Instead of 0.9% sodium chloride, what happened? 23 point something. She compounded, but the 0 0.9 was failed. How would you do that? That's exactly the reason why these pharmaceutical companies try to make something that's already ready. So you don't have to calculate. Okay. So check your IV bags, check if you grab the right one. So going back, told you about the bottle, right? Yeah, you make those solutions in the past. Now, not anymore. But I want you to know that this came from a solute and a solvent. Whatever is in here, the solution. When we say dextrose, I want you to picture sugar and water. Sugar and water. That's your dextrose. Okay. Sugar and water. What is that? You're going to think about that. If you mix sugar with water, what is that? A simple syrup. If you add heat, it's a simple syrup, correct? Okay. So if it's sugar and water, what is the sugar? Sugar here is your dextrose. Solute, solvent, or solution? Your sugar is your solute. Which one is your solvent? Your water is your solvent. And it may a dextrose solution. Follow? So if this is dextrose, you'll have to picture this as an IV bag, sugar originally, but of course you mix that in a beaker, solvent, and, okay? And then the water. So this is your dextrose, that's your sugar solution. Other side will be your normal saline is actually a combination of what? What? Salt and water. Because it's sodium chloride. And I'll talk about that. I'll get back to this in a bit. We'll put this aside. This is a common question on the board exam. This is a common mistake, exact mistake that that tech did in that Emily's case in Ohio, okay? 
Salt is your solute and water is your solvent. Then now you have a salt solution. You follow? We'll get back to this because this and this are not the same. Follow? Let's go back to dextrose first. Before we move on, I want you to know abbreviations. Capital D stands for dextrose. This is particularly for IV bags, okay? And ACL stands for sodium chloride. You gotta remember NA, capital N, lowercase a, capital C, lowercase l, because NA stands for sodium, okay? Which came from the word natrium, okay? CL stands for chlorine, and combined it's chloride, okay? So make sure you write it properly. You don't like this, it's not the same. Okay, symbol for sodium, sodium, symbol for chloride. Okay, what's KCL? Potassium chloride. K came from the word kalium, which is potassium. Okay, capital D, NaCl, KCL, what's NS? Normal saline. These are common abbreviations for your IV bags or IV solution. Normal saline, no matter what, will be equivalent to 0.9% sodium chloride. We'll get back to this later. Okay? But I want you to know that NaCl is not the same as normal saline. When you hear the term normal saline, automatically the first thing that should come to mind is that's 0.9% sodium chloride, less than one. Okay? They're not the same. Leave it for now. We'll get back because I want to do the dextrose first. Okay. So you got a D, you got an NACL, you got a KCL, you got a normal saline. What's another common one? What's LR? Lactated ringers solution. Okay. Those are the common ones that you're going to see. Okay. What else? You are going to see D5W. So W stands for water. And D5W means dextrose 5% in water. So when this becomes 10, D10W, it becomes dextrose 10% in water. When it becomes D5NS, it becomes dextrose 5% in normal saline. Yes, they come in different strengths, and that's what we're going to talk about. Is that clear? Okay, so dextrose 5% in water, dextrose 5% normal saline. That means there's 5% of sugar on the picture, or 5% of dextrose in that water. Clear? Okay, I'm moving on. When you see a percentage, it doesn't always tell you what it means, but you know that it is a measure of concentration or strength of a drug. Agree? Okay. So a percentage can either be weight over weight, percentage can be volume over volume, or percentage can be weight over volume. The most common one is this one, weight over volume. That's why we're talking about solute solvent makes a solution. You follow? No matter what, when it's percentage, weight over weight, the unit will always be grams over grams which tells you every time you see a percentage, the weight must be in grams and the volume must be in ml. Know that because this is invisible all the time. It's just a percentage, okay? When you see volume over volume, know that that is ml 
over ml or all the time to get the percentage of person multiplied by 100, correct? Or this can very well mean grams over 100 grams right away, right? And this one can be ml over 100 ml. We will use this later, okay? So when it's weight over volume, what unit will it be? Grams over ml. You want to get the percentage and multiply it by 100. But this one is exactly the same as this one. This will be grams over 100 ml. And this side will help you figure out how much solute is in this IV bag, okay? Thing you need to remember when you see percentage, it will not tell you whether that's weight over weight, weight over volume or volume. But these are tips. Weight over weight, since you're doing compounding, usually is a combination of two solids or semi-solids. We did ointments yesterday, right? Lip and fold method. The concentration of that ointment, if it's in percentage, is actually based on weight over weight. Why? Your active ingredient is either in powder form, okay, or another semi-solid, right? And then the other active ingredient or the base, I'm sorry, which AKA is your solvent, is another semi-solid. So it will be in grams over grams, no matter what, okay? What we've been doing last week will be weight over volume, because we're using powder and water, right? If we mix two liquids together, that will be volume over volume. Can you follow? And no matter what, for you to remember it, that's a solution. But technically, when it's solid, it's a compound. The substance that you created is a compound, okay? But for math purposes, you can use the term solute, solvent, and solution, so that you know which is which. Okay, it just clicks better. Are we good here? Okay, now let's apply this, okay? When you say B5W, this means there's 5% of dextrose in water, okay? If I'm, there's an invisible percent there. If I'm to write 5%, I know that it's salt and water, I mean, sugar and water in this case, so I will have to do five grams, correct? For every 100 ml. I just converted this 5% dextrose into a fraction. You see that? Right? Okay. But this means you have to remember another thing that I forgot to mention. The numerator will always be solute and the denominator will always be total solution. You follow? It's not solvent. You follow? So you amount of solute over total amount of solution. Okay. Here's the thing though. Not all IV bags come in 100 ml, right? So your IV bag may come in a one liter bag, correct? may also come in a 250 ml bag, in a 500 ml bag. This one tells you that there's five grams of dextrose in a 100 ml solution, which is this one, correct? But what if we have to calculate the amount of solute, which in this case is dextrose, in a one liter bag. What you can do is to use this and use ratio and proportion. How do you do that? If there's five grams of dextrose in a 100 ml solution, how many grams of dextrose will there be in a? A thousand ml, why? This is a one liter bag and one liter is equivalent to a thousand ml. Remember, this is ratio and proportion. So cross multiply 5,000 
divided by 100 is? A thousand divided by a hundred is fifty grams of dextrose. Now you know that if I'm to make this V5W in a one liter bag or bottle, I will have to measure fifty grams of that sugar. Picture that in the old days I was doing it. You see now. Because I wanted, or the order was a 5% dextrose in water. Can you see? It's not that difficult. Okay, let's do a V10W. V10W. So this will be right away, that's why I said this works easier. 10 grams for every 100 ml, but I want to make a 250 ml bag of V10W. What's my proportion? X grams over 250 ml. Cross multiply 2500 divided by 100 is X is 25 what? Grams of dextrose. So if the problem asks you how much solute is in this solution, your answer should be complete. 25 grams of dextrose. If this is your solute. I'll pause right here because normal saline is different. One minute. Freshman, did you get that? Yes? Okay. We just did percentage in what? Five minutes, 10 minutes. Okay. Now you can picture what we do in the old days, measuring the salt and the slaughter, putting it in a bottle. Now you don't have to do that, but I want you to understand how much is in here. There's about one page of questions on your finals all like this. How much will you? Okay. Ready to move on? Okay, now sodium chloride is different. Sodium chloride is your salt, right? You have to remember, again, sodium chloride is not the same as normal saline. And they will not tell you what normal saline is equivalent to. It's something that you have to remember. Okay? Normal saline will always be 0.9% sodium chloride. No matter what, which means if you are to convert this, this is 0 0.9 grams all over 100 ml. This is your solute, this is your solution. So if you are to make a normal saline in a 500 ml bag, how much salt or solute is in that normal saline? 0 0.9 times 500 divided by 1,000 is, I mean 100 is, there's going to be 4.5 grams, not normal saline, of what? sodium chloride in that solution. Can you follow? But did you see what I used here? Because it's normal saline. The problem was normal saline. Is that clear? That's how you set up that equation all the time. Okay. But here, if you put here NS, I will mark you wrong because I'm asking of the solute. It's not always normal saline. There can be what we call a half normal saline, a quarter normal saline. So what does that mean? A half normal saline would be 
0 0.9 divided by 2. So what is that? 0.45% sodium chloride. Follow? What's a quarter normal saline? 0 0.9 divided by 4. And what is that? 0.225% sodium chloride. So if you're asked to make a quarter normal saline, your equation will be 0.225 G over 100 ml. Can you follow? Equals how much? Say, for example, you're asked to make it in a one liter bed. 1,000 ml. This is XG. Follow? Yes, yes? Okay. What is that movie? Yes, yes? Try to say it. He likes the guy. Let's like, say yes, yes. <laughs> it just fell on me when I said it. Okay, 0 0.225 grams times 1,000 ml divided by 100, you should be able to get 2.25 grams of what? I just said what? Supposed to be your solute. If you put NS, you're wrong because NS is 0.9% sodium chloride. Common mistake. That clear? Your PTCE, your final exams, usually will not tell you that a normal saline is equivalent to 0.9% sodium chloride. This is one of those, th those things that you need to remember. So don't think, I can't solve this problem. There's a missing variable. No, there's not a missing variable because you should know this variable. Is that clear? Okay, now work on your worksheets. It looks like this is our only topic today. We're not behind. Work on your worksheets. You have how many? 15? 15 questions, ratios of IV bags, 15 prescriptions, 15 IV bags to make. Make sure you correct, you use the correct abbreviation and symbol, capitalization counts, and labeling of the solute counts. You have to put Grams, if it's not in there, don't get used to test with the letter G already after. Your final exam may or may not have this G. So have the habit of putting the unit of measure all the time. Is that clear? Okay, we're going to 15 problems. It's this ratio and proportion. There's no other way. I will recommend you to do it. This ratio and proportion. That's the best way to solve this kinds of problems. Freshman, did I use you or are you good? Yes? Okay. Who's working after class again? Okay, I'll stay with you. This percentage lesson is on your week three, Wednesday, labeled as percentage allegation, um, and dilution, I think. right, Jennifer? And then under that is the flow rate and the drip rate video lectures. Those are references, I do lecture. So you don't, which you should not do, you should ask me, you don't understand and say you don't understand. But if you're that kind of person who I'll figure it out myself, the videos are there at your fingertips on Blackboard, okay? But this latest ones are not there. You gotta know that. I'm just recording it right now for Ashley. She's not here. For Leslie, she's not here. Common mistake here, okay? NACL, not NS. NS means 0.9% all the time. 